Here comes the Peter from Belize saying, Valby! Valby! Valby!
I'm Michael Paulsen. I'm frontman in uh, Volbeat, doing the guitar and vocals. My name is John, and uh, I play the drums in Volbeat. My function in the band is I'm playing the bass, and my name is Anas. My name is Thomas. I play guitar and do a little bit of singing, uh, yeah, and try to help out with every other thing that's going on around the band. Uh, everything from back home to touring. Uh, and I'm the new guy. I was playing football <laughs> at that time, but suddenly I got into heavy metal music and I thought that was pretty much more fun to, you know, to uh, jump around after a fucking ball. So, <laughs> yeah, I uh, stole, uh, I mean, I bought uh, my first guitar in eighth or ninth grade or something. Yeah, I was playing with uh, a f uh, two friends of mine in, back in school. And then later on, in uh, 1990, I was uh, doing a band called uh, Dominus, and I was uh, working on that project for 10 years. It was uh, <coughs> death metal, very extreme death metal. Um, yeah, we did four, four CDs on a small Danish uh, label and uh, some videos. After 10 years, I desperately wanted to do something else. Uh, I, you know, I was growing up with uh, old rock and roll. My parents were listening to Elvis Presley, uh, Jerry Lewis, Chuck Berry, Little Richard. And these songs somehow was stuck in my mind later on. And uh, so I split up Dominus to do a more rock and roll thing. And uh, it turned out to be Volbeat. Uh, I wanted to do some rock and roll sounds with uh, a heavy sound. I was calling up one of my very old good friends, Jon Larsen, uh, on drums. Michael called me uh, about, what is it now, seven years ago, eight years ago actually, and said that he had some new stuff that he wanted me to help him try out. Uh, if, and I did, and got stuck. And I've been there ever since. We easily got up to around ten songs or something, and. Um, so I called some other guys up, uh, one of my other old friends, uh, Anders Kølholm, on bass. I had him in my, my first band, Dominus. In school, I started up with um, playing drums, you know, and then I was in a band with two of my friends. The one played guitar, the other drums, so there was only the bass left, so I started on the bass. And after that, we have different kind of guitar players uh, joining us. Well, I play in another band back in Denmark, and we supported the guys on their Danish tour in October. And then in mid-December, Michael called me up and asked if I had any plans for this year. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm gonna write and record a new album with, with my other band. And he was like, well, you got no plans for touring, and if I wanted to, to try it. And I was like, yeah, why not, you know? It's nice guys good music, so we just needed to figure out if, if I could play the stuff and like musically fit to the band and they thought I did. These guys are so much better than the other guys, uh, both as a guitar player but also as a human being. They haven't kicked me out yet, so it's been doing great. I see the lineup right now as very, very strong. I truly love them, and, uh, and uh, they are uh, they are my friends, and they are my very f close friends. And I think Jon is the one uh, I have been knowing for uh, I don't know since I was 16 years old or something. And uh, <coughs> I re I really liked him. He's special, but I like him. I remember the first time I met him, I was like scared because he he looks like Rob Halford or something, and he's like really old school with with he had some glasses and his leather jacket and all that stuff, and he was like, he's like, he can seem a little angry or something. He's, um, he's like the backbone of everything behind his drums. You don't see him really doing the shows or anything. He's just back there making sure that everything uh, sounds right and uh, the tempo is, is right. And um, I think he uh, adds a lot to the songs because he only plays what he has to do. So there's more room for, uh, for Michael. Sample. or the other guys. Got some funny hobbies about his movies and posters and 
and stuff like that. He likes these very awful B movies, you know. I just can't, I, I don't get the point. He, he loves a movie with a monster done out of a, a paper or something. <laughs> It's these old horror movies and stuff like that. I normally describe him as uh, complete old school. Uh, he likes uh, some of the old uh, bands and old movies and uh, really old movies, black black and white movies, which I must admit I never <laughs> never see a black white movie. But he is a collector. He collects uh, movies and uh, also these uh, plastic figures <laughs> that comes with the movies. So and he's got. Uh, yeah, it's almost a library. He's appearing as a quiet guy, and he is a, a little shy too, uh, quiet. But if you uh, getting to know him, he's opening up. You have to get to know him before you uh, before you understand who he is and how you yeah, understand why he's not an angry old man. Well, he's he's actually a really really happy and funny kid. Jon ist, sag ich mal, der Ruhepol in der Band. Also, äh, wenn man, Jon sieht man eigentlich selten lächeln. Aber wenn man ihn lächeln sieht, dann lacht er wirklich herzlich. Er ist ein ganz, ganz super lieber Mensch. <lacht> he's just funny guy. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he's got this humor. It's just so, yeah. It's a little rough, but it's funny, yeah. He's, he's dry. Für mich hat er auch den, den Humor, der zu mir am meisten passt. Aber es kommt halt nicht immer durch. Er schweigt halt. Uh, die meiste Zeit, aber wenn er was sagt, dann ist es meistens immer zum Schreien komisch. Not a quiet guy, but he's not, you know, uh, explosive. He's a character in a really nice way, and he always got a smile for you. We uh, spend a lot of time playing uh, PlayStation and uh, talking bad about all the people, you know. He's, uh, you know, kind of easygoing. It's his cigarette and a cup of coffee and just mellowing out. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a nice guy. It's not easy to to explain, but he's uh, he's special in a good way. I love him. He's always pissed off. Anas, he's a funny guy. But he, he got a very, very big heart. Uh, he, he's amazing because uh, you can always count on this guy if you need help, and that's anything. Whenever our driver is, has been driving for like 800 kilometers and somebody else got to take the wheel, it's always honest. And if somebody got to carry some extra boxes while loading, it's always honest. So he's like, he got some horsepower. You can call him up in the middle of the night and tell him, hey, uh, you think you can do this for me tomorrow? And he will be there. Uh, you, you can really trust this guy. I think he's educated as Smith <laughs> uh, many years ago. So, so he's, he's got, uh, he knows how to use his hands. So yeah, if the car is broke, he, he's the one fixing it. With Anas can man auch sehr viel Spaß haben. Viel, uh, Unsinn machen auf Tour. He likes to party and have a good time. <laughs> I think I'm the person who's, um, if I get too drunk, I get um, talk too much, shout too much. On stage he's a bit like Jon. You don't notice him that much. Yeah. Anas and Jon, the bass player and the drummer, they are this cool fundament uh, in Volvo. I, I really think they have uh, each, uh, they, they make a very complete band when they put all these things together because uh, you have this uh, solid bass and the bass player and the drummer and then you have uh, all the flashy things with Michael and Thomas uh, jumping around. And I think a lot of the fans like him, like his attitude. Auf der Bühne ist er eigentlich uh, auch ein Spaßvogel. Agiert gerne uh, mit, dem, mit dem Publikum. Anders is, yeah, Anders is, is a little more, I think, the down to earth guy. You know, a little more mellow and sometimes a little more quiet, but only for a short while. And I've been knowing him for many years. So, uh, and I've been living with him uh, way back uh, in, a, in an apartment in, in Copenhagen. So, uh, yeah, he's one of my very good friends. 
He's like he's always smiling and he can talk with everybody. I prefer if people talk nice to me, but if they don't do, I go rough at them immediately, you know, sometimes. And maybe I'm too rough at people and say things right in the face. And he's a good father for his children. If I was a girl, I would go for him, you know. Anas is Anas. Thomas is the new guy. <clears throat> I don't know him, know him that much, but for now he's uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's very fresh. <laughs> and uh, what I liked about him is that he he really got both feet solid on the ground, and I like that. He has a good drive. He's, he's, he's a guy who wants things to happen. If we talk about it, it has to happen. Not just talk. Let's get some action. And he's good at. If you say something, he do it. He's got a good feeling about what's going on and what we need and how we like to do things. I got some farting problems. <laughs> I guess I'm the worst. <laughs> so um, I guess they think that's a little annoying <laughs> in the van. <laughs> Make everybody laugh in the bus and this and happy. We have a lot of fun in the bus. He's uh, a little younger than the the rest of the crew and band. And he's uh, very energetic, which I like. He's, uh, you know, jumping around on stage. Er läuft links und rechts. Man, so schnell kann man gar nicht gucken, wie Thomas irgendwie über die Biene flitzt. The small wild kid who jumps around. Running, smiling, having a, having a laugh. Well, Thomas is his little energy bunch, you know. Very fun to be around. Yeah, I think he's a very good uh, performer and uh, also a very nice and funny guy off stage. Yeah, actually, when we were some of the summer festivals, uh, people thought he was on some kind of drugs, but uh, he's only doing beers and whiskey, so that's it. Super lieber Mensch, mag gern Party machen nach der Show und uh, ja, macht eine Menge Spaß. It's a bit of a party aid. The good thing is that uh, the relationship between me and Thomas is so new, so there are so many good things I have to learn about, and, and, uh, and I like that. Michael is this guy who's um, he has tons of um, ideas. He's a creative guy. He's not that logical. Writing most of the songs, uh, lyrics, uh, got a lot of ideas about artwork, got a lot of ideas about like all like down to pretty boring strategic business stuff. He's, he's this guy who's thinking music. I don't know. Yeah, 100% of all time he's thinking music, music. It's not like by the book, he's got his very own book of how to do things. Very determined, I think. He has, he has focus on what he's doing. He's serious, of course, but he's not, you know, he's not seeking contact as much as uh, some of the other guys are. But he does his job really good and he's, uh, he's always there. He doesn't drink that much or uh, parties or anything. He's uh, actually kind of quiet sometimes. He's a guy who 
could be a little shy. It's, it, it's, it's, it sounds funny, but sometimes he's a little shy. Michael is for me a very humorful man. With him can man have a lot of fun on tour. Uh, also a nachdenklich man sometimes. And auf der Bühne ein absolutes Energiebündel. Er hat die Massen in der Hand, er weiß ganz genau, wie er mit den Menschen umgeht. Er ist ein super Frontmann und ich denke, also ich habe lange nicht mehr so einen guten Frontmann live gesehen. Michael's a terrific frontman. He's very, very um, into his work, uh, very professional. He's the guy who's got the problem with, with everybody's coming up to him, recognizing him. But of course he knows when the show's on and he has to perform or do something. He's the guy, he's, he just do it. He will stop at nothing to achieve his goal in a positive way. And then of course he's also like the one that's most into Image, all that shit. Uh, his hair and his tattoos and all that stuff. I have my ego, everybody has a kind of ego. He's got a strong personality and I think he's also very recognizable uh, in the band and in the media. So if, if you open a magazine right now and there's a picture of Michael, you instantly know like Volbeat. And I think uh, that's kind of a very important uh, um, thing to have and you cannot create it. You either have it or you don't. And he has it. If you took ten uh, ordinary people and just uh, put them up in a line, and Michael was standing in that line, he's the person you will naturally look at. I think he's very unique. I haven't met anything, anybody like him. You know, uh, as a frontman, he has a very special uh, voice um, and style of singing that. Um, it's quite rare, I think. Most uh, male singer in this genre only screams and shouts, and he actually sings. If you listen to the music he made before, and if you listen to what he's bringing today, and he, he had this beautiful voice all this time. Is he a dictator? Yeah, of course he is. But we all are. I mean, we all are dictators in, in our own little little private way. But he is a, he is a boss. A good boss because he is my boss. Michael is just this uh, man with a big personality. He's the father of the band, but also like the queen. <laughs> okay, delete that one. <laughs> I'm gonna get kicked out here. <laughs> Takes good care of, uh, of his crew and his band members. A good friend. I'll say a good friend. He's like the heart of the band, I think. Without their music, uh... Maybe I would have done something criminal or something. I've been listening to all kinds of music since I was a child. I like a lot of the old punk stuff from the 70s. I'm kind of a punk rock guy, I think. My favorite still Green Day is like, I think, Bill Dio is like one of the best songwriters I've heard for a long time. The Beatles, because they were a huge influence when I grew up. Right now it's a band called the Tiger Army. Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash. And I'm also really much into a band called Rancid. Kiss. Manic Street Preachers, Social Distortion. And another one called The Clutch. Adam Ant. He was the first and I still enjoy his music a lot. Muse. My all-time favorite band is the Ramones. They were the best band ever. They were perfect from the beginning and they were perfect until the end. King Diamond, Megadeth, Metallica, Black Sabbath, Dio, Rainbow, Stoner Rock, Rockabilly kind of stuff. And then have some Danish bands. Yeah, tons of good bands. 
a lot of the metal stuff from the 80s because that's when I grew up. Of course I had to buy a couple of metal records to check that stuff out. I like that energy and stuff too. Of course, as a teenager, I was, you know, totally hooked into heavy metal because it's, it was so interesting. It was so mysterious somehow, and you know, all the covers, all the demons and, and stuff. It was, it was interesting. So there was a time as a teenager where it was only metal. My favorite music is, you know, everything just is good. If I can feel something in the music, it doesn't matter what kind of music it is. I guess I'm just mostly into like stuff that got a lot of energy, a lot of drive, and then some good melodies. I can be inspired by a song in, in, in the radio, and it doesn't really have to be a good song. If, if it's got a good hook line or something, then maybe I can turn it around a little bit or something. I listen to every kind of music. Music is, you know, it's a matter of taste. I can sit here and say, I don't like jazz, but maybe I just don't heard the right jazz for me. There is, of course, a lot of stuff that I don't listen to and, and that I don't care about it, but no, I don't hate it. I totally hate techno music. There's still some people who, who likes it and, and it's okay. I'm not into if it's too black metal or too, too hardcore. Techno for me is just, it's nothing. It's, it's totally crap. Everything else is just a matter of, you know, perhaps listening to the right record or something. If a song's not possible to play on a, an acoustic guitar out here with a bonfire and, and some beers and some good friends, then, then it's not really worth listening to, I think. The thing is, I have always been writing the material in Volby. I have tons of uh, melodies running in my head every day. Um, so I, sometimes I'm walking around singing to my mobile, you know, recording it. And when I come home, I would put down some guitars. Michael tends to get some riffs together, and then normally he and I will meet up first. In our practice room, and we will, uh, we will build it up together, and he's good at that. Uh, but he's not writing anything. If he was supposed to do, it would sound like Black f Flag or something. <laughs> Composing the song is more Michael. Anas actually can write a song. <laughs> I have tried to compose some stuff. And he doesn't have the time for it, and he really don't like writing. It's not the same as uh, ball beat sound. It's, it's, I'm more, yeah, it's, maybe it's gonna be too, Stone rock for my <laughs> for me is oh uh, yeah. So maybe someday. I'm just lucky enough that these guys actually love what I bring to the table. Of course Michael asked us if we think it's good and so talk about it. And honestly he's just loved playing bass. Uh, <laughs> I think I could make the most crappy riff and he would say, yeah, that's good. All of us go in and say, oh, I like that bit. No, I don't like that bit. You know, change that bit into that. And... But in the last end, of course, it's, if Michelson thinks it's very, very good and what other guys think it stinks, it's, yeah, it's going to be <laughs> his way. And Thomas, well, 
Uh, he got his own band where he's writing material for Gob Squad. Maybe later on uh, he would come with some ideas. He actually, you know, we had a sound check um, where was in, in Hamburg on this tour. And he was uh, fooling around on his new Gibson guitar uh, with some kind of ska reggae stuff. Uh. That sounds good. Play that for me again. I say, yeah, I say, yeah, play for me. And I was uh, recording on my mobile, and I told him, I'm gonna use that. I like it. up with something out of the blue just to a sound check. I don't know, the lyrics is something I do uh, as the last thing. So when I got the melodies in my voice, I don't know how the guitar is sound, I would just uh, improvise some words and sometimes I would stick to a few words and sometimes make a whole lyrics out of a few words. Right now, it's a little bit hectic in, in, in Denmark, but uh, I, th I think it's okay. I, I take my time to talk to people, and of course, it's always great to, to hear that people like what you're doing. So it's not something I find irritating. I guess especially Michael is, is feeling that sometimes you go to a grocery store or something like that, and there's guys coming up to him wanting autographs and like pictures and all that stuff when you're not like, it, when you're back home, that's that can be like a little bit weird. If I go down to you know, go into the city with my uh, with my wife or something like that, it's 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 not that everybody just hey you are the guy, but it's beginning. Some of my friends actually do think that it's pretty annoying that I'm not that much home anymore, you know. But on the other hand, they they think it's good because that's what we all fought for for so many years. Yeah, in Denmark we're one of the most popular rock bands, and it seems pretty good down here as well. But still. 
I haven't got a problem meeting with one of my friends or helping him out if he's moving to a new apartment or something like that. I cannot even walk my dog anymore. Uh, so, uh, but it's okay. I think it's more irritating for my girlfriend because she thinks that uh, I'm not home that much. So when I'm when I'm finally at home, she wants to keep me for herself. So we, if we go out or something and people keep you know, coming up and want something from me, she sometimes thinks it's too much. Why I do uh, on, go on tour is, of course, for playing. That is the main thing about it. It's going on stage and just have a blast. And yeah, it's, that's why you do it. You can sit in a bus for 10 hours like that and not sleeping and it's still worth it when you're on stage. So yeah, the live thing is, is, is all worth it. It's funny to be with the guys because we know each other so well and we have a good time, have a good laugh, and it's funny afterwards, we party, yeah, drink. We're like, it's not like the band and the crew, it's like, it's just like a travel group. It's kind of a vacation too, it's family going on vacation and then we play live also, like with Kelly, Kelly family or something. <laughs> and of course it's really nice to meet fans. It's, uh, there's like, it, it's a little bit weird, you know, because um, we're just playing our music because we want to play music and we like it. Uh, and uh, suddenly we got a lot of people, there's a guy telling me in Berlin that our music made him not commit suicide or something like that. And I was like, that, that's pretty strong, you know. That was like extreme, but, but you, you also got people that come up to you and say, well, I listen to your album all the time or I've been looking forward to this show for like two months. And, it's like, it's really nice to meet the people that are actually keeping the machine going. Yeah, well, the biggest kick is, of course, getting up to play. And, you know, sleep in a good hotel bed. Yeah, I need two guys. Die CD kam hier reingeflattert und wir waren von Anfang an begeistert und seitdem wir die CD hören, sind wir glücklichere Menschen. Also ich mache hier die ganzen Interviews mit den Künstlern und unter anderem so großartigen Jungs wie Volbeat. started in Hamburg yesterday. Last time we had 250 people, now we had, I don't know, 900. The German audience is, is great. They're so dedicated. Voll auf die Nüsse mit Vollbeat. Voll auf die Nüsse mit Vollbeat auf Star FM 87, 9. Maximum Rock wünschen Thomas auf Vollbeat. One more time with more energy. Okay, <laughs> see you later. Auf Star FM 87, 9. Ah, fuck, this is... Maximo Rock wünschen Thomas auf Volbeat. Hey, this is Thomas from Volbeat, and you're listening to Thomas on Star FM. Maximum Rock, I'm gonna do that again. Hey, this is Thomas of, of and you're listening to Peter on Star FM 87.9. Maximum Maximum Rock. Cool. All right, guys, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks. For See you tonight. Yeah, I miss my dog. You got a picture of it? Of him? Oh, he got his own MySpace profile. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Volby! What's yeah. up, guys? Thanks for the life. See you tonight. Yeah, sure. <laughs> You're welcome. I'll be there. Uh, 
Hello. Hello. Thank you. It's the most beautiful more candle. More silver than uh, pretty, if you ask me. It's a tape Really nice stuff. Yeah. Well, I think it's better we take a train, eh? Sometimes it's just too much driving and waiting. I have to wait. I have to come at, at, at a venue and you put your things up and then you have to wait for yeah, five, six hours sometime. And it's, yeah, that's the worst part about it. Uh, we have very long drives sometimes. That's, that can be a major pain. Well, some venues, there are not, it's not that fun when, when people don't stick to the contracts. And, if we turn up and things are not good, you know, with the PR system or monitors or something, you know, technical stuff that is not, uh, you know, good. It's, 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 not, it's not easy to, to work around stuff that, that's not working. So uh, you can be a little bit pissed off when that happened. Boring. You go to bed at four o'clock, uh, a little bit or extremely drunk, and you have to wake up at eight to drive, and you're doing that for three weeks. That's not nice. And of course, if you're if you're eating at McDonald's every second day, that also fucks your body up. Sometimes, you know, we are playing on the outskirts of, of cities, you know, so there's no place to go. Actually, that can be pretty annoying as well. And interviews. Some Sometimes we have to drive at night and you're tired, you just want to sleep in the car and some other guys are drunk and just, oh, yeah, let's listen to this music, yeah, turn it up and uh, that's going to be quite annoying. You don't smoke in the car, but sometimes you're, you're in uh, a traffic jam and people just roll the window down and smoke out, out the window. And of course, if I'm sitting back there sleeping or something and suddenly it smells like I'm in the middle of a tobacco fabric. So the toilets is the favorite place to just go and... <laughs> See it, yeah. <laughs> I've always told the guys if there's something that I'm not satisfied about, they have to come to me and complain, and they're not doing that. So uh, I just guess that they think everything is all right. Most of us tend to snore, which isn't always that good, but I think actually that's, that's the worst thing. It's especially when we have to be four guys in a room and there's one guy just snoring like hell and you just want to go to sleep. That's very annoying. <laughs> yeah, snoring. That's the thing. I, I, I don't snore. I, I don't think I snore. But there are some of the guys that snore. You know, we actually try to get a separate room because everybody is... <laughs> and, uh, and you can't sleep with, with these kind of monkeys. <laughs> so uh, that is, yeah, terrible. But uh, try to cope with it. Sometimes you end up with a guy snoring and that's... That's a pain in the ass. It's always <laughs> the other one, you know. <laughs> I've been playing music since I was 16 years old. Of course, during 
that time I've been working with lots of assholes and idiots and fools. And uh, when you get older, you you learn how to work with the right people, and you just get rid of the assholes. They're a real bunch of friends, and not just the band members, just the crew too. It's a real, it's just like a, it's a team. And I think this whole they, they function as a team too. Even though we have uh, so different backgrounds, we're all different characters. I think uh, big part of success of the band. There's no egos. There's no number one. There's no. Um, there's no disturbing factors in the band. I hate them, of course. Any band should always hate their crew member. Volvo crew are so bad. Mess Mikkelsen and um, I'm a sound check for for Volbeats since uh, last Christmas. We all in the band think that he's the most professional sound guy we ever worked with. And then he's from the same part of Denmark as I am, the more farmer part. <laughs> you know, uh, the other guys are from the capital city, so they're a little. When I first met Volbeats, they were like. As some years ago, they were playing uh, like bar gigs and they didn't have a record out, only like a demo tape. Of course he can, he can drink, he can joke, all that stuff, but when it comes down to work... He's a working horse, <laughs> really. He's every penny worth. He also makes every PA system and every monitor system sounds good, even if you, you see it and you're like, fuck. <laughs> you know, he can always he can make, make things work. Almost nothing can piss him off. Well, we had this one night, uh, last tour, where he was the only guy packing the van. Uh, that pissed him off. I think there's a very good vibe when we're on tour. Really like it. I'm very proud to have this guy on tour. And he's not for sale. Terrible stories about other drivers. Way back, we have been using other guys, and you know, we, it's just you no. Know, you have to relax when you sit on the bus. You have to trust the driver. My name is Michael, and uh, I'm the driver of Valpeet. And yeah, the sober one. <laughs> we also got a drunk one. Me and Michael got along from the beginning, and yeah, started out listening to some music at Michael's apartment. I didn't know that Michael before that uh, had a death metal band uh, making four records before he started out with Wild Beat. And it just seems like that we were getting along pretty easy and pretty fast. That's why I said yes to to join. If Rasmus got the, like, the longest work day, then Michael, the pilot as we call him, he's got the worst work hours. Because when we're playing festivals, you know, we're leaving at three o'clock in the night, and he's driving until morning. Of course, I I have to get some sleep when we are driving. But nowadays, we normally have a hotel or 
at least somewhere to sleep, so it's not that bad. He drives that car while we other guys are sleeping or watching movies. Then he goes to sleep maybe while we play the show. And then he drives while we're drinking or sleeping again. So I don't get why he want to do it, because it must be extremely boring. <laughs> but I guess he just likes, likes to drive. It's amazing <laughs> how many hours this dude can drive. Very good guy, and it's nice to have somebody you know who's driving the bus. We can get Michael getting the bus on stage, but <laughs> maybe it will come later when the stage is not bigger. This is something else. Well, my name is Christian uh, Peterson, and I'm the uh, technician for all the backliner. And uh, besides that, I play acoustic guitar and three songs during the set. He's very energetic. Uh, I love him. He's actually. Uh, one of my new friends, and uh, I think it, it's not that easy when you're getting older. It's not easy to get very, very, very close friends. It's not that easy because your your close friends is always someone you was growing up with, or you were in school together, or you were working together somehow. I've known Volpeet for three years, something like that. I met Michael uh, when uh, Michael was uh, working as a uh, Helper for a guy uh, uh, who was uh, uh, disabled to to move, and he was uh, for what was it four month uh, a teacher in the class where I worked. When I came into the class, Mike was sitting in the back of the class to help this guy, and I uh, we came to in the breaks. We uh, started to talk to each other and f found out that. Uh, we both had this uh, interest in, in, in rock and roll music. We were talking about music uh, every day, and he also knew the old band that was playing in Dominus, so, and he played the guitar for himself, so he was very interested in music. Then we just agreed that we would meet someday and play some records for each other, and then we became friends, and then uh, I went out and saw Volbeat, and I said to him, well, I've, if you sometimes should uh, need a technician or anything, then just say, then I can come and help you. Really nice guy. Uh, he's like always smiling. He's the guy with the most funniest laugh. He's got one annoying thing, that's his laughter. When he laughs, it's uh, the first 10 times, you're like, ha, ah, that's cool. But then the rest, a thousand times, you're like, shut the fuck up. I think Thomas, he, he farts, so that's very smelly. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like a laughing type of guy, so it's, it's nice. He actually, you know, become one of my very close friends. Uh, and talk, I can talk about everything with this guy, and uh, you know, everything from, you know, yeah, very emotional, uh, emotional um, uh, feelings. You know, it's just he, he's uh, he's one of my very close friends. The dice keep tumbling right around With a flame of folks who Who stick together for a time Have you noticed that thing? Dice make their calling names Well, I told you, get a game We do it something else
name is Rasmus. I do the merchandise for Wallbeat and um, guest appears on stage sometimes. He was uh, with us before C Christian. I've known them personally since uh, I think 2002, but I, I've known Michael for a long time uh, on the stage, uh, you know, the metal stage in Denmark. He used to play in a band called Dominus, which was death metal. And then I was really excited about the new project, Volbeat. A very dedicated heavy metal fan. Uh, you can ask him anything about heavy metal, he will, he will have the answer. In the beginning, I was you know, just like an all-around guy for the band, you know, helping out with the gear and stuff like that. But then uh, as the band grew, they started to sell more merchandise. And then you know, they had to have a guy who was responsible for that. Rasmus is one of the guys who's actually got the longest work day because he has to build up the whole merch stand, count all the t-shirts, be there while we, well, while we go after we eat, go to the hotel, catch a couple of hours sleep or watch some Simpson, Simpsons or play some PlayStation, whatever. He has to stand out there from when the doors open and until the doors close. I think the best merch seller I have ever seen. <laughs> he's, he's pouring the shirts out. I guess he wants everything to be smooth, so that's like, whenever things are getting a little rough, he's like the one to to get people together again. That's that's a pretty good thing to have as well. I, I love to get drunk with this guy. And yeah, he's a strong guy, so if we, it's always good to have some good, strong guys with us. Actually, my deal with, with Rasmus was a drunk deal. <laughs> uh, I told him, uh, couldn't it be fun if you walked on stage playing Danny and Lucy? He said, oh, why should I do that? Said, because it could be great fun. Then I couldn't jump out to the audience sir, uh, and uh, crowd surf or do, do something. He said, yeah, if you want me to, said, yeah, it'd be great. Instead of standing behind the microphone stand, get out to the crowd, you know, and. And I think that was his plan of getting Abu Meir and, at the, and one track. We were heading for a tour and he said, you remember what you promised me? I said, no. Yeah, I was supposed to play Daniel Lewis. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but uh, I actually thought that was a very good idea because it was fun and it's, you know, it's always nice to have your friends uh, doing those kind of things. So. So he's been doing that for a very long time and for each tour we give him another track uh, to play. I think it's basically in some way the same thing with Christian. Um, because in the beginning Thomas was doing both the acoustics and the electric. In the start we had this stand for the acoustic guitar but it's, you know, this was not working that well, so we thought about it. And then we figured, well, Christian plays guitar, so why not let him do the acoustic stuff and Thomas can focus on, on what he's doing. It's a good way to do something different. And uh, yeah, and, and, and for the, the next record, we will bring it into the studio so he can record the acoustic guitar. So uh, yeah, that, that's good. The reason why I'm so enthusiastic when, when I'm playing with Volbeat is that Volbeat has a, a very good uh, contact with the audience. That's the thing we like to, uh, both with, with, with Rasmus and, and uh, Christian, you know, to show that, yeah, this is serious, but it's not as serious as, hey, come up on stage, play with us, you know. Uh, we think it's funny to, to get our crew on the stage. Let me hear you scream for the devil! Yeah, you're rebels, huh? I want to hear you scream for goddamn Johnny Cash! Johnny Cash, goddammit! 
if I got a time machine, I would definitely visit the 50s. Uh, and it could perhaps have been great, you know, be able to, to have a life in the 50s, but I also think it was, it, it could have been very hard. I would like to be born at another time, but I would like to have some stuff from now with me back, because I don't think it, would, it was that funny standing in a stage where you got this little cabinet and pe people are screaming, you couldn't hear yourself. And But I would love to have seen some of the yeah, band's Beatles yeah, or Finn Lisi. I would love to see Finn Lennon live. <laughs> but there's a lot of big musicians uh, at my time, so it's, it's okay. It could have been great, you know, to have the opportunity to see Elvis and Jerry Lewis, Chuck Berry and Little Richard. Yeah. Even though I have seen Chuck Berry and Jerry Lewis and Little Richard and some of the oldies, but I think that time got, you know, is, is charming somehow. But I also know that it was a very tough time to make a living. Morbid song is um, it's one of the new ones. Eh? <laughs> I don't have any particular all-time favorite song, but at the moment, one of the songs that I that I really enjoy to play is River Queen. Maybe Caroline Leaving. I think that's one of those numbers where there's much energy in, and it's yeah. Pool of booze is always fun. Pool of booze, Caroline Leaving, stuff like that because it's got this really good energy and it's it's easy to dance to. Sometimes it actually depends on the sound on stage and, you know, the reaction from the audience. It sounds that just, like, grab the audience and make the whole place go nuts. That's, that's really nice. All the sounds, and I like uh, I like the sound. So of course not. It would be pretty stupid to play something that you don't you don't want to. Everybody has their favorite songs, and everybody has songs that they don't really like. I would say uh, the Garden Sale. I, I don't listen to at all <laughs> anymore. It's I have heard it too much. If you turn on the radio, you always get get Garden Sale. If you turn on the TV, you get Garden Sale in your face. But it's cool to play it live. But it's like kind of an overkill in Denmark. <laughs> But it, it didn't kill the audience interest, so let's go. Cool. If there was a song I was hating, it would not be there. When you were a kid, you wanted to be a fireman, a policeman, a football star, or a rock star, you know. That's the four options you got. Three, four years ago, I spent the whole summer uh, working with old people, like uh, jumping on a bike, driving to visit some old men or uh, women, helping them do their toilets, taking a shower, cleaning their apartments. Uh, 
It's not. It's it, some of the. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna spare you for the details, okay? But but <laughs> so, some of those days were really shitty, <laughs> literally. Uh, and of course, some of the days were nice because it's 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 human beings and uh, and it's nice to. Some of them had some. They had a lot of life experience, so we had had, had a cup of coffee and a, some some cake and had had a long chat. I was a painter and decorator actually. I was an apprentice, and I just got bored with it. So, but I was stuck in in stuck in it for for a few more years. I think that's probably, but it's just because I got bored with it, and I had a year and a half left of the education. I think that that's probably the worst, because I wanted to quit but couldn't. For uh, what was it two weeks, I was, uh, you know, uh, riding this big, uh, what is it called? It's a, it's a small truck, you know, re removing snow away from a, a, a very big building <laughs> for two weeks. That, that was really crappy, it was cold, and it doesn't make any kind of sense, but <laughs> somebody, somebody had to do it. <laughs> I'm a smith, you know, welding and stuff and all that I have been since uh, right after school and yeah, of course, standing in the same place, making the same things every day, it's, yeah, but it's for the money and nothing else. found forward in 2005 um, immediately it was one of those bands that um, had this unique sound I cannot remember having uh, I've never signed many bands uh, from a demo uh, I need to fall out of my chair I think that's what happened when I heard the first musical forward on uh, on demo just a completely unique uh, blend of music been drunk a couple of times <laughs> with Ed and Ever the promotion guy, they are, they are very funny guys. Not a lot of labels were interested, so that's probably what uh, was good for us. Um, and that's how we uh, signed the band. I only have positive things to say about this guy. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's a good guy, and he seems to be a good businessman. And he's good at work, you know, uh, building up bands. We don't have to discuss with him about uh, money for this, or we need this, or we, let's do this, and he don't um, he don't interfere in what we want to do with anything. He seems to be very dedicated to music, and not uh, you know he's just not. I don't see him just as a label boss who's trying to run his thing somehow. He's I think he's got his heart at the right spot. It's a kind of team play. So what we do is uh, they deliver a great record and we go out and try to tell the world the record is here. He's very serious about what he's doing and he's, you know, he believes in, in Waldbeat and you can feel that. That's good. Um, and he's actually quite funny. <laughs> I really like his personality. So uh, I have only good things about to say about that. He's just, I mean, I think he's a cool guy. Das erste Mal mit der Band in Kontakt bin ich gekommen über MySpace und äh, dann haben wir vorher schon ein bisschen über MySpace geschrieben, haben uns dann quasi mal auf dem Festival verabredet, uns unterhalten und die Jungs wussten halt, dass ich schon öfter mit äh, dänischen Bands gearbeitet habe. So we had a good talk with this guy when he were in Copenhagen with the Ildis Post and uh, he really liked the the Waldbeat, uh, Waldbeat music. Und dann haben wir einfach beschlossen auf dem Full Force Festival letzten Jahres, dass wir gern zusammenarbeiten wollen. Und seitdem machen wir eigentlich alle Jobs, Festivals außerhalb Dänemarks zusammen. 
Und halt von zu Hause kümmere ich mich dann halt um ein paar Presseabwicklungen und Interviewfragen und alles, was halt so, was die Band halt nicht wirklich alleine handeln kann, außerhalb von Dänemark. Now he's a steady tour manager uh, and also doing uh, album management deal with uh, with Wildbeat. He's kind of like a filter. He's reading all the mails and forwarding the stuff that we need to to think about. He's done a lot of things for us. And I must take my head off to this guy because he's working his ass off, really big time. He's doing such a good job. He's this guy who's who's into it, yeah, 200 percent. He rents a car here in Cologne, drives to Copenhagen to pick us up and drive us to Switzerland, something like that, you know. That's amazing. He's good for all of us, and he he works his little his little butt off every single day. Yeah, he's German, you know. The band for me has had a this symbiosis geschaffen between metal, rock and roll, and a lot of fun on the stage. And that's what I like about the band. So, I've never heard so a music direction before. Everybody wants to work with us now. That's for sure. There's money to get, you know, but there was a time when there was no money. And it was all about liking the music, being into it. Of course, he, he's getting paid, but in the beginning, he was actually refusing getting any kind of money because he said it was very important for him that he could uh, that he could uh, prove to us that he was worth having that kind of job. And we told him very early, "You're doing a very, very good job." The Jungs sind alle super, super, super liebe Jungs. Und deshalb macht es halt generell sehr viel Spaß, mit Volvid auf Tour zu sein. I like Daniel. A lot. He's just as fucked up in the head as the rest of us. I guess we're gonna, we're gonna stay with Daniel for a very long time. I truly love this guy. He, he's amazing. He believed in the band before everybody else. Scream for me, Larkin! It feels good to be back in this room, I'll tell you. Good evening, Looking forward to the concert, and uh, the beer is good. I know the drummer, not personally, but he works with my dad. So I'm just looking forward to seeing him in action. I know them since the beginning of the year. Over a burned CD, I have to say, and it has inspired me. The first time I saw Volbeat was uh, just before Metallica, the warm-up for Metallica concert. concert. So, it, it gave taste for more, so here I am. Als ich die, die Konzertkarte bekommen habe, war das tatsächlich so, dass ich die Band noch gar nicht kannte. Dann hat irgendwie mein Freund, der mir die Konzertkarte geschenkt hat, eine Platte zum Geburtstag gekriegt jetzt Ende August. Und das war so, hallo, ich freue mich. You've been in a World Beat concert before, yes? Uh, yes, I've been in, uh, in Rusk, the concert. I was in uh, I was, uh, it's a World Beat concert. Very, very good. I, I love World Beat. It's really good. We're looking forward to it. Ich habe erst drüber gelesen, habe es dann aber irgendwie über, überlaufen und dann zwei CD habe ich mir angehört irgendwo im Laden und dann war ich völlig weggeblasen worden von dem Ding und das war der Hammer. Eine Freundin von mir hat nach, zu meinem Termin, zu dem Termin, wo sie tätowiert von mir wurde, sie mitgebracht und gesagt, Chiki, das musst du hören, das ist deine Mucke. Und ich habe die gehört und habe mir gedacht so, Alter, wie geil ist das denn? I've uh, been seeing uh, Volbeat in Aarhus when Metallica was playing uh, and I have the uh, latest CD. And I think they're very great. They should try the, to, to hit out Dow Denmark. They're really great. Ich habe im Rockhard davon gelesen, habe mir dann irgendwann im Saturn die CD angehört, sofort gekauft 
Danach gab es ein kleines Konzert hier in Hamburg im Headbangers Ballroom. Kleiner Club, 200 Leute. Da war die Hölle los und seitdem bin ich ein Die Hard Anfänger, Anhänger von Wallbeat. Ich habe zum ersten Mal gehört, hab, da habe ich echt nur so gedacht, so, oh, geil, das ist so. Die Stimme und dann Metal zusammen und so und außerdem Johnny Cash auch noch so ein bisschen dabei, ne? Haben wir gerne. The music they're playing is between Elvis and Rock and Roll. It's, it's very nice. They should uh, try go outside Denmark. Es macht ein Hörbum, Chickabumbo. Macht aber genauso. Ey, Alter, ich hasse dich! Weißt du, es macht alles. Das macht's aus. Es ist eine absolut geile Live-Band. Die CDs sind schon sehr geil und live sind die einfach der Hammer. Man kann als Punkhocker herkommen, als Rockabilly herkommen, als Metal herkommen. Das ist schon äh, eine Sache, die können andere Bands nicht. Und das können die Jungs. Der Sound, die Stimme, die Mischung aus Rock'n'Roll, Metal und ähm, diese Stimme ist einfach einzigartig. Hammer, oder? Großartig, einfach großartig. Die Art und Weise, wie er singt, meiner Meinung nach ähm, Vollbeat ist äh, der Sänger. Eindeutig, total. Ja, der Sänger. Ja, und ich stehe auf die Stray Cats und er bestimmt auch. Also. Wenn ich schwul wäre, würde ich ihn lieben. Ganz ehrlich. Ein Hammer. Wie kann man noch besser singen als auf der CD? Well, you can't say anymore. They're good. And they're, they rock and they roll. That's it. Yeah, one of the best Danish acts. That's for sure. Yes, it's my favorite Danish band. It's my first concert. I'm very honored to be here today. It's so great. My friend invited me here and it's so, so cool. always take our time after the show to meet people. We like people you know, coming up to us and we do, uh, you know, after a show we always walk down to the audience and talk to them, sign everything and we invite them backstage sometimes and, you know, we do, you know, we really like to stay in, in contact with our listeners uh, uh, after a show and even by email. So I think it's important to appreciate that someone is actually buying your, your music. They definitely are close to the audience and, and I think for every band that it, it's so important. Because sometimes you see a band that, that, that they play really well and there's no connection to the audience. And basically that, that's where it ends. And, and I think if, uh, just I think like tonight, or in, in, in a, this time period, or 12 months now, just I think you will see uh, a lot of lot more people wearing Volbeat shirts on the streets. It's like, that's a sign of success for them. That's, that's how they, uh, it's proof to them that they communicate with, uh, with their audience. It's nice that, that people show up and, and see us and afterwards we go out and talk to people and stuff like that and they're very friendly. The girls dance and the guys headbang. Like, that's a kind of unique combination that you usually don't see. I really like and I really enjoy speaking to people. If they got something interesting to say, of course. <laughs> that's it, you know, it's, but, but that's, that's, that's it. It's just like person to person. It's not like fan and rock star. It's more like if, if there's somebody that gets something on their mind, it's, it's real nice to have a, have a talk. And of course, it's pretty hard to keep that on the same level whenever we grow bigger as a band, because people think you're a rock star. Then. I've been in this business for 25 years and I just know girls at a show means success. We need four men or ladies up here on stage singing that one. Whoa! Whoa! And I want you guys and ladies to scream for this one. You know the chorus now. This is always with you.
That's a good thing about it, that you, your music means something to other people. But at some points it's just, you know, you, you want some privacy sometimes. Sometimes you also meet people who just want to, you know, <clears throat> hang out with the band just because the band is famous. Also like pop chicks, we have a lot of that in Denmark actually. Like in people that normally goes to pop concerts and discotheques, they listen to Volbeat as well. So I think they're very wide they are in their style. I like to be myself and people don't look at me like I'm yeah, something. Yeah, because people often do this, they put you on some kind of level, you are somebody, it's just, oh, and I'm just a guy like everybody else. If you think too much about stuff like that, you tend to, to Google, get big, you know, messes your, your head up, get big headed and, and no. Don't think too much about it. Lots of youngsters is dreaming about being a band and touring. Uh, and we are doing that now. Um, so it's always nice to hear people telling us that our music means something to them. I don't see myself as a rock star. Grandios, wirklich grandios. Das war super geil. Das war fett. Echt. Wolbeat. They are pretty fucking awesome. Ja, yeah, super. Obergeil. Hi, Wolbeat. Fucking love ya. Great music. Yeah, I like it. Hey, Wolbeat. Uh, we love your music. You so fucking great. Die Stimmung war geil. Also, ich habe eine Gänsehaut bekommen, mehrfach. Und geil. Fucking awesome. Die strahlen pure Begeisterung aus und das reißt halt die Meute mit. Es vereint alles. Es vereint. Es vereint. Es vereint. Hervorragend. Es vereint alles, was man will. I think uh, Wolby is. Um, they're great. I love their music. Die Performance einfach, dass er ins Publikum gesprungen ist. Das Stage Diving zum Beispiel macht kaum noch jemand. Heutzutage irgendwie. Er macht das. Und er holt dir noch drei Bunnies auf die Bühne, mit denen er zusammen singt. Die dann da halt ne, mit Zusingen irgendwie fand ich schon eine sehr geile Performance. It was just awesome. Ja, yeah, awesome. Geil. <lacht> Geil. Ja, das ist der Hammer, so beschreiblich. Also kann man kaum vergleichen mit einer anderen Band. Hello guys, your music is so great, I love it. I love Wallbeat. Wallbeat, of course, Wallbeat. The coolest band in the whole wide world. No doubt. Und ich glaube, das nächste Konzert, was er spielt, wird nicht in so einer kleinen Halle wie die Markthalle sein. Es wird größer werden. Das nächste Mal in der Wembley Arena. Oh, Oder größer. Elvis lebt, so ungefähr. Elvis Johnny Cash. Und Johnny Cash. I can actually say right now that many of my dreams actually has been coming true. So uh, I have met many of my big idols. I've tried to support Metallica. I've opened this orange stage in Roskilde Festival, and it's, for me, I've grown up in Roskilde as a child, and I've been there yeah, since I was four years old. So for me, it was you know one of the biggest dreams coming through. I had the opportunity to talk to James Hetfield. It was. Uh, it was really something because he has been my, uh, uh, you know, hero and a big inspiration for many years, even before I got my first guitar. Everybody got this dream about being in a band and being successful as we are right now. So that's a, a dream come true. And I have been playing with uh, Elvis Presley's old musicians back in, in Copenhagen at a show where I was singing three songs together with these guys. That, that was really something. To be on stage with these kind of uh, legends is, you know, when I was five years old, I was sitting and looking at these guys at television, and then so many years after, I would be there on stage and, and uh, playing with them. I already got what I need, you know. Got a nice girlfriend. Maybe I, I'm gonna buy a dog, get some kids. 
that, that maybe that would be a dream if if I could keep on combining the the thing about living a pretty normal life back home in Denmark, out here touring, have a lot of fun, meet some nice people. Dame Mustaine from Megadeth. Uh, I'm a big fan of Megadeth. I've been listening to Megadeth since I was <laughs> that high. So it's, uh, it was amazing to to talk with this guy. He was very calm and very relaxed, and you know. He was interesting in, in what I was saying, so he, he was a good guy. I'm not gonna have some kids right now, I'm only 26 years old. So I'm gonna wait a couple of years, but I'm definitely gonna get some, and I hope there's gonna be time to bring them on tour, or time to, to see them grow. So I'm not gonna be some fucked up father, living my dream and, and not thinking about my kids. But that's that's the future. Yeah, I've been talking to Phil Campbell from Motorhead, and. We have been supporting Antrax in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, we have been talking with so many of our idols, actually. So many of our, of our dreams has been come true. But I just find out if you have a dream and it's happening, then you just gotta have a new dream. So the dream right now for me would be to uh, compare to music, of course, that this gets even bigger. And that we can we can make it so big that we the, the only thing we have to do is to play music tour. Just I think it would just be nice if I didn't have to work anymore. <laughs> that would be a nice dream come true. At some point it's gonna stop, but uh, not yet. Of course I wanna go all the way, earn a lot of money, and go to the states or Asia, play and yeah, go all around the world. It's not about earning lots of money and because it's only material stuff you can buy out of money, you can buy the emotional package. So we have been working for the emotional package and we are here. So I actually feeling quite good and I don't need anything else. I got a good house, I got a good car, got a good dog, got a good girlfriend, got good parents, good sisters, and a good band. What else do I need? Collecting horror movie posters, that would be nice. It's the first thing I do after every tour. Wake up in my own bed. Hug my kids, my wife, and just, you know, the good thing about it now is uh, I don't have to work, so I just, you know, spoil my kids and my wife when I go at home. Of course, if my girlfriend's home, I'm probably gonna do something with her, hopefully. For me, it always takes one or two days, you know, to get used to a normal life, if you can say it like that. I'm probably gonna set my telephone to whenever one of the guys from Volbeat is calling that it got a different tone than else and then don't pick it up for a week. <laughs> I would lay down on the couch and watch a movie. Get a cup of coffee and watch TV. And go to my own toilet and just sit there and say, oh, this is nice. And then perhaps falling asleep. Yeah, there's quiet and it's only me. That's a homecoming rock star. <laughs>
what? It is always great to be home. You, you know that. Your mommy do the best food. <laughs> you get my point? Coming back in Copenhagen, playing this venue, it's just like... Yeah, it was perfect. For me, it was perfect. And just the feeling that you're with, with your guys and girls tonight for one and a half an hour. I know this was the last and I enjoyed it so much because I know it's going to be going to go a month or more before I'm going to play again. So I have to enjoy this last concert. And then the audience was incredible. Everybody singing along, clapping. It's, yeah, I can't describe it. I bring my daughter today to the sound check and yeah. I could see it's just, there was no people, but she could see when it went into the hall and saw all the speakers. And all. Oh, yeah. yeah, she was proud. To be back, you know, at your home and, and come hang is great, and it's the best way to finish a tour. But the point is, it's been an amazing year. So every gig has been fucking amazing. Like a half year before that we went from small clubs to really big clubs. And now this tour, it's only been big clubs, sold out shows. Getting out of Denmark was really good, you know. It, good promotion elsewhere in Europe, great, good audience, sold out gigs everywhere. Every show, 15 dates, sold out, pre-sale. It's like, nobody's doing that anymore. And we're like... I just appreciate all of the great support people have been giving us all over, you know, in Europe. And uh, we will definitely be back for a massive tour in 2008. for the first time at a, at a prize award show called uh, Steppenwolf, and that was in, um, that was in 2006. And I heard that I was completely taken aback because I'd never heard music like that before. Um, a mixture of um, extremely melodic songs and the mental backing and uh, Mika is amazing vocal, and I, and I was amazed. Like I, I had never heard anything like it, and and, and before that I'd never heard about me. And so I um, I started talking to the to the band, and we, we uh, became friends. And uh, I almost only wore Volby T-shirts for the next I mean, year or something. I was really. Pressing people to listen to this, listen to this, it's amazing. And then nobody knew anything about Baldwin. When I heard it the first time, I was uh, I was uh, very moved by it, by the melody of it. I didn't hear the lyrics especially, but I was moved by the lyrics of it, and especially the entrance to the B uh, part, the, the chorus thing, you know. Leaving it all my own. It was an excellent songwriter. And uh, no, I think it's an extremely good song, but it's also a, a beautiful, you could call it a funeral hymn, but it's a very beautiful one and a very powerful one. And uh, I think you could say, um, if, if after your death you would have such a song written for you, that would be okay. <laughs> I think it's a very beautiful song.
Kan vi lige få Johan ind igen? Kom ind med dig, de stive apparat. Johan Olsen, ind med dig! Even though Volbeat is getting bigger and bigger, and it, right now it's looking very good, we can go on a headline tour in Europe, and not every band can do that. So we really appreciate uh, the thing we're doing, and the people we are working with, uh, the people who are working uh, around us, uh, you have to appreciate that, and you have to remember where you come from. We are not trying to be glamorous or anything, uh, just as long as, you know, people stick to the contract, then then everything's good. Um, of course, the, in the beginning, you have to play for almost nothing. But now that Volbeat is some kind of success, uh, of course, we are earning kind of money so we, we actually can make a living. Uh, and that's good, that's a dream come true. In, in Denmark, the second re record here went gold. And we're playing bigger and bigger venues and uh, capacity like 1,000 people now. And uh, when I first met them, there would be like uh, maybe 50 people or, or less. So um, on the way up, it's nice. It's is auf jeden Fall eine sehr große Veränderung seit dem Festival, seit dem Full Force Festival, wo ich die Band zum ersten Mal noch live gesehen habe. 2006 hat sich eine Menge getan. Die Band ist für mich zum ersten Mal eine Band, die ich begleite, die wirklich quasi kometenhaften Aufstieg irgendwie hingelegt hat. Gar nicht mal so äh, von dem Bekanntheitsgrad äh, durch CD-Verkäufe oder durch große Presse- oder Medieninterviews oder irgendwelche gehypten, wie, wie andere gehypte Bands von anderen äh, großen Labels. They do realize uh, the importance. A lot of people can identify with the, with the way they live, the music they make. Um, yeah, that's what I see as a development. They're, just, they're on their way up, definitely. Ich bin dankbar für jeden Tag, den ich dabei sein kann. Das zu erleben ist eine große Sache, eine große Ehre auch für mich. Ich denke einfach, die Band hat das aus eigener Kraft alles allein geschafft. Ich denke, keine andere Band, die ich momentan kenne, hat dieses Live-Potenzial, diese Energie, den Spaß, den Volbeat auf der Bühne repräsentieren und rüberbringen. Und ähm, ja, 
Ich habe in, äh, in diesem Jahr schon also, so viel gesehen, so viel erlebt mit der Band. Wir waren so viel unterwegs, wir haben alle Festivals mitgemacht. Wir haben äh, eine gute Clubshow im April gespielt, wir haben fantastische Reaktionen bekommen. Also ich habe bis jetzt noch nicht eine E-Mail oder einen Anruf bekommen, wo sich jemand beschwert hat oder gesagt hat, die Band würde nicht äh, die Versprechungen irgendwie einhalten, die sie wirklich auf der Bühne live darstellen. Also es ist wirklich der, der Wahnsinn. Looking at say in 12 months from now, two years now, I think the band's gonna be a lot, lot bigger. And hopefully, you know, they, they will be able to continue uh, uh, to continue writing music on the, on the quality uh, that they've been doing in the past and they're doing right now. Because I heard some of the new songs that are really killer. Yeah, I can only see them go up in the future, definitely. Die Band hat ja kein künstliches Image, die repräsentiert niemanden, der sie nicht wirklich ist. Also wenn die Band so natürlich bleibt, so locker bleibt und trotzdem ihre Energie auf der Bühne nicht verliert und ihre Coolness und ihre Freundlichkeit den Fans gegenüber, wenn sie das nicht verlieren, hat die Band noch eine riesige Zukunft vor sich. Und ich denke, dass in Europa da noch ganz viel passieren kann und auch außerhalb Europas, in Amerika zum Beispiel, denke ich, gibt es noch so viele Leute, die genau auf solche Musik gewartet haben. I hope they have a future. I, I, I think so, and I really hope so, because uh, they're doing something different. So, uh, if they continue to do good records, which, which I'm sure they will, then uh, I think they will get very, very, very big. We try to uh, stick to the standard procedures, not anything to do with, you know, we don't need a, a red carpet or pink uh, apples or whatever, that kind of crap all the rock stars are talking about. It's, it's just as long as uh, you're capable of doing a good show, uh, I think you should be thank uh, thankful for that. Uh, I know lots of people who think they're uh, bigger than life, and uh, I hate these kind of people, and uh, it's a waste of time to have these people around you, so we usually get rid of them. Uh, we like to keep both feet on the ground and uh, you know, be thankful for for the chances we have now and the opportunities that are, there is, but because we don't know how long it's gonna, it's gonna be there. The good thing about it is, for us, I think, it's not going too fast. So we, we, we get used to it instead of going straight number one and just bang. Then it's from one day to another. This is coming a little more slowly, so I think that's maybe healthy for us. It seems like that we are doing the right thing. And you know, we don't know how long it's gonna last. So right now we are just, you know, enjoying the moment. You know, being in the moment. This is like once in a lifetime chance. Maybe next year, nobody will hear Wallbeat anymore. The third album is gonna suck, you know, and nobody, nobody's gonna go to the show because we already overplayed every festival and all that shit. <laughs> so, so, so we have to like, we have to do this while we can. There's tons of good bands. And one day you're up, one day you're down. Right now, we're up, so we're gonna, you know, gonna ride, you know, uh, the big wave. And uh, as long as it's going good, it's good for us. But if it's going bad, we will still be here and kicking somebody else's asses. We love what we are doing, and that's the whole point. Of course, if it's gonna be 20 years, then it's good. If it's only gonna be a half year more, then, then it would be stupid to miss that chance. Enjoy the ride as long as it lasts. We are just trying to be normal, deadly people with both feet on the ground.